please stand to pray the diocesan prayer for vocations. O oh God, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. Bless our Diocese of Savannah with many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. Give the men and women you call the light to understand your gift and the love to follow always in the footsteps of your priestly son. Amen. <clears throat> Please join in singing the processional hymn, Table of Plenty. A reading from the book of Lamentations. The Lord has consumed without pity all the dwellings of Jacob. He has torn down his anger, the fortresses of daughter Ju Judah. He has brought to the ground in dishonor her king and her princes. On the ground in silence sit the old men of daughter Zion. They strew dust on their heads and gird themselves with sackcloth. The maidens of Jerusalem bow their heads to the ground. Worn out from weeping are my eyes within me, all is in ferment. My gall is poured out on the ground because of the downfall of the daughter of my people. As child and infant fade away 
in the open spaces of the town. In vain they ask their mothers, where is the grain, as they faint away like the wounded in the streets of the city, and breath breathe their last in their mother's arms. O oh, what can I liken and compare you, O oh, daughter Jerusalem? What example can I show you for your comfort, virgin daughter of Zion? For great as the sea is your downfall, who can heal you? Your prophets had for you false and suspicious visions. They did not lay bare your guilt to avert your fate. They beheld for you in vision false and misleading portents. Cry out to the Lord, moan, O daughter Zion. Let your tears flow like a torrent day and night. Let there be no respite for you, no repose for your eyes. Rise up, shrill in the night, at the beginning of every watch. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him for lives of your little ones who faint from hunger at the corner of every street. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Why, O oh God, have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your flock, which you built up for old, the tribe you redeemed as your inheritance, Mount Zion, where you took up your abode. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Turn your steps toward the utter ruins, toward all the damage the enemy has done in the sanctuary. Your foes roar triumphantly in your shrine. They have set up their tokens of victory. They are like men coming up with axes to a clump of trees. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. With chisel and hammer, they hack at all the paneling of the sanctuary. They set your sanctuary on fire, the place where your name abides, they have raised and profaned. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Look to your covenant for the hiding places in the land, and the plains are full of violence. May the humble not retire in confusion. May, they, may the afflicted and the poor praise your holy name. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus entered Capernaum, the centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, and no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be driven out into outer darkness where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, You may go as you have believed. Let it be done for you. And at that very hour, his servant 
was healed. Jesus entered the house of Peter and saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, the fever left her, and she rose and waited on him. When it was evening, they brought him many who were possessed by demons, and he drove out the spirits by the word and cured all of the sick to fulfill what had been said by Isaiah the prophet. He took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have today two miracles and one very short story. It's one of the few places in the whole Bible where Jesus does two. starts out to do a miracle with the centurion's son who says, you know, my servant is suffering back home. He's paralyzed. Jesus, will you come and heal him? And Jesus says, yes, right? And then after he heals that man, and the man says something that for our first communion we think about because we say it every Sunday. The man says, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come into my house because you're the Lord and I'm a sinner. And therefore, it's, and, and, and he said, just say the word and my servant will be healed. I know he will. He had so much faith in Jesus did and we say those words when we come up for Holy Communion, don't we? We say, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my, under my roof or into my soul. You only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Holy Communion heals our souls. It's a medicine of immortality. promises that we will live forever. I want to live forever, don't you? That's what Jesus promises those who eat his body and drink his blood. And so what a wonderful miracle. And then you know what Jesus does? He goes to Peter's house. His mother-in-law is sick. And he immediately takes her hand. And she gets better. And she gets out of bed. And this is normal. Isn't that wonderful? Two great miracles. Every sacrament is a miracle. Sacrament means to make holy. Jesus is going to do something to these children's soul. Okay. Of your child, you're four more years before you're an adult. For these children, Jesus is going to change your souls. The sacrament, confirmation, and holy communion. And that, that power he will give you will help you to live your life as a Christian. Isn't that wonderful? And that's, what, that's why this is such an important day. Usually we're able to have our first communion with all the children together, right? And confirmation with all the eighth graders and it didn't work out that way this year. This year. You know what? The same Holy Spirit comes with the same power as it always does in every sacrament. And you will leave this church changed forever. And that's what we want to pray for. So, don't be afraid. And just receive the Lord and your hearts to Him and let Him give you. So, well, I'm not worthy. I'm a sinner. Yes, I know we all are. But the Lord says, come. And so we come. And that's what we do. And my Peyton Sherry to come forward with her sponsor for the Sacrament of Confirmation. On the day of Pentecost, the apostles received the Holy Spirit as the Lord promised. They received the power of giving the Holy Spirit to others and so completing the work of our baptism. This we read in the Acts of the Apostles. When St. Paul placed his hands on those who had been baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They began to speak in other languages and prophetic words. In the Catholic Church, we believe our bishops are the successors of the apostles and have the power of giving the Holy Spirit to the baptized, either personally or through the priest they have born. In our day, the coming of the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of confirmation. It's no longer marked just by the gift of tongues, but by the coming in faith. He fills our hearts with the love of God, brings us together in one faith, but in different vocations to make the church holy. Take the gift of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive 
will be a spiritual sign and seal to make you more like Jesus Christ and a member of his church. At his baptism by John, Christ was anointed by the Spirit, and he began to set out his public ministry to set the world on fire. You've already been baptized into Christ Jesus. Now you will receive the power of the Spirit and the sign of the cross on your forehead. And you must be a witness before the world to his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. Your way of life should reflect the goodness of Christ. Jesus gives his gifts, very gifts to the church, and the Holy Spirit distributes them among all of God's people. I encourage you to be an active member of the church, alive in Jesus Christ, and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, to give your life completely in the service of others, as did our Lord Jesus. I think you say today by receiving the sacrament of confirmation, we talk about in class that the time comes when you don't believe in Jesus because your mom and dad do. They pass the gift of faith to you. But the time comes when you say, I believe, and I choose to follow him in my relationship with him. And that's what the Holy Spirit will help you to do today. Christianity can never be forced. You always have to be free. Because love has to be free, doesn't it? And that's what God does. He loves us. He invites us to love him back. He'll never force us to do. So I invite you to give yourself as a gift to him today receive this powerful sacrament of confirmation. I'll invite all present to please stand as our investigation of sin and confession of faith we respond to the questions I do. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father, Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles, and today is given to you sacramentally in confirmation? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now we say a special prayer calling the Holy Spirit down upon the My dear friends, the baptism of God our Father gave the new birth of eternal life to his chosen sons and daughters. Let us pray to our Father as he pours out his Holy Spirit upon his daughter. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon her to be her helper and guide. And give her the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Catherine of Siena. Be sealed with the gift Holy Spirit, peace be with you. We now lift up our prayers to God for our special needs and intentions for ourselves and our families and our world today. That the church may grow in number, holiness, and faith through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
that those in authority may be led by the word of God in the use of their power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, That all who are ill and infirmed or suffering from any poverty or deprivation may receive the healing power of Christ and the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our That all of us gathered here today may grow in peace and love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may enjoy eternal rest in Christ's heavenly kingdom, and especially John Thang Dang, who this, whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer these prayers and all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, for he is Lord forever and ever. Please be seated. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept
hearts, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for me. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. watching from home, we pray with them a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament, body, blood, soul, and divinity. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I choose to be one with you, Lord. I want your heart next to my heart, your soul next to my soul, your body and blood inside me. I want your infinite divinity to fill me completely. Jesus, I love you. Never permit me to be separated from you. This time, we invite Daniel Piedra and Jackson to come, to come forward. Their first holy king.
Let us pray. Having received the pledge of redemption and life, we humbly pray, O Lord, that with the Blessed Virgin's motherly help, your church may teach all nations by proclaiming the gospel and through the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth through Christ our Lord. Special congratulations to Peyton Shirley on confirmation, and also to Daniel McDevitt and Jackson Kent for making their first holy communion. <laughs> that will be available after for photos of you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The match is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Thanks. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits throughout about the world. Please join in singing the processional hymn, The Spirit Sends Us Forth.